Research Committee meeting at Republic Airport. It's Roy Douglas, Jim Boss, Gary Hammond speaking with Mr. Titterton today. And we have Charlotte Geyer, President of the Society, and we have Al Costelli. Al Costelli of our members here. Okay. Mr. Titterton, um, first of all, could you uh, talk to us for a few minutes about your family background, where you were born, where you grew up, early education, your early life? Well, yes, I think I can remember some of that. I was born in 1904, and uh, I'll be 85 in two weeks. And uh, I went to, born in the, I was born on Park Avenue, I'm glad you asked me. So, of course, they since tore the building down and put up a 20-story with a doorman, but we didn't have that in those days. But uh, then I moved to the Bronx when I was 10. I went to Bronx Public School, Morris High School, and then to New York University and majored in aeronautics. I graduated in the second class that they had graduated. 24 was the first class. I was in class of 25. And after that, I stayed on for a year as a, a teacher, took some graduate work, if you will, for one year. Made all of seventy-five dollars a month in case you're interested. That was high payment. And then I went to Washington to work for the Bureau of Aeronautics as an engineer in the Navy Department, aircraft. And I stayed there for a year and a half, uh, approving or reading and analyzing and approving uh, analyses, structural analyses of new airplanes that were in the wakes. And after that. I went back to NYU and Professor Clement wanted me to help write a book. And I wrote a book uh, known as Stress Analysis of Commercial Airplanes. It was the first one ever written on stress analysis. Uh, and uh, his name got on the cover, but my name got in on the title sheet. And incidentally, the reason his name got in the cover, he corrected one of my sentences because it wasn't good English. <laughs> That's the way it was in those days. But uh, then I went to work for Keystone Aircraft in Bristol, Pennsylvania. And after six weeks, I'd had enough of that. I don't know where they ever been in Bristol in those days. And they used to take the sidewalks in at 6 o'clock at night. And then at 1 o'clock in the morning, everybody who went to Trenton or Philadelphia for a drink would come home and wake you up. But it wasn't very comfortable. But after that, I got a job with Huntington Aircraft as chief engineer up in Bridgeport, Connecticut. Howard Huntington was one of the first airplane designers. As a matter of fact, Donald Douglas worked for him at Roosevelt Field when he got out of college, back in 1915, 16 year or something of that sort. But um, the trouble with Mr. Huntington was we designed and built three airplanes. By that time, he was broke. He never peddled anything he built. We just built one. Oh, let's try it this way now. But we actually had one of the very first biplanes ever built, cabin enclosed. Because in those days, everything was biplanes with an open cockpit. We had built one of those. Uh, but anyway, after that, I went back to work for the Navy Department as an engineer from Oh, I don't know what years it was, but anyway, uh, uh, it would be 1931, actually. And I worked with them until 36 when I joined Grumman. Now, the interesting thing, I think, for you people is that my job was with the General Inspector of Naval Aircraft, which was stationed down in, uh, oh, this Greenwich Village, actually, right? one block from the uh, river. There was a federal building there, and we were stationed there. And that general inspectors, I was the engineer in the office. We had about half a dozen inspectors, and our responsibility was Fokker over in Jersey, Sikorsky up in Bridgeport, uh, loaning out at Roosevelt Field. That was a second loaning, smaller loaning. And then Grumman out in, in the in Long Island. And I used to visit all those people once every week, once every other week, 
to witness some structural test or something of that sort. And it was, it was rather interesting. One I enjoyed very much, I went up to uh, uh, Sikorsky airplane, and there was a drop test of the landing gear and the tail wheel. And it took all day to do this. And while we were doing that, over in the hangar, we had a double hangar, over in this other hangar, two Russian mechanics built a whole tennis court while we were dropping <laughs> landing gear. <laughs> and, uh, as a matter of fact, the cute thing is when they drop the tail wheel, it quit falling six inches above the ground. They obviously had the center of gravity of the airplane roar. It was too far forward. But hit another six inches, I wouldn't have known the difference. <laughs> so we had to correct it. But those are little interesting things that happened. Now, getting back to Grumman, uh, they spent a year or two in Orba, in, the, in Baldwin in the garage, as that's where they started. And then when they had the XFF-1 airplane uh, getting ready to fly, they rented a hangar at Valley Port, which is now the big shopping center. And uh, they assembled the airplane there, and the XFF-1 was flown from that field by a chap named McAvoy, who was hired from NACA, which is a predecessor to NASA. And uh, I had a witness that for the Navy being the engineer in the area. And what the test was when you uh, flew an uh, airplane for acceptance, he would take off and at about 500 feet, he would circle the takeoff point full throttle for an hour. Mm -hmm. And if the thing still stayed together, it was accepted and it could go down for Navy tests. <laughs> and uh, then uh, when they got a contract, they couldn't build it in that hangar. And uh, so they, rented the old Fulton Truck Works, which is right up here, as you all know, and moved in there in uh, late October, early November of uh, 1932. Uh, a year later, they had a production contract underway, 27 FF-1 airplanes, which was the two-seater fighter that they had tested originally, and uh, it got busy enough that the Navy established an inspector of naval aircraft at the Grumman plant in the old Fulton truck building. And when they did that, there was a lieutenant commander, Andy Crinkley, put in charge. I was appointed engineer on the scene. I had to move out from New York. And there were about five inspectors and a secretary. And that office uh, was right on the spot you didn't have to go to New York or send in to Washington for approval of this side or the other thing. We did when the drawings were met up, met all the specs, we'd send them in to Washington for them overall see, if you will. But I worked there and I lived here in, in Farmingdale I, uh, from oh, November of 33.